Hi, I'm Alexa Donnelly, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Let's go over time blindness and ADHD. Time blindness is the difficulty or inability to sense the passing of time or recalling when certain memories took place. It's a common symptom in people diagnosed with neurodevelopmental disorders, including ADHD and autism. However, anyone can experience it on occasion. People who experience time blindness may struggle to plan things weeks in advance because it's difficult to imagine that far into the future. Time management is a component of executive functioning, which is the part of the brain that's responsible for directing and regulating thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. It involves knowing what time it is, how much time is left to complete an activity or a task, and the ability to perceive the rate at which time passes. And before I go on, I've linked an in-depth article on ADHD and time blindness and some resources for getting ADHD treatment in the description below. Feel free to leave us a comment with questions you might still have after the video. Now, let's go over some common symptoms of time blindness. Losing track of time because of distractions. This can be while you're getting ready or completing a project with a deadline. Feeling like you don't have a good internal clock you might feel like it's been five minutes and you know, 30 minutes really feel like the same amount of time. Poor time management. Planning ahead can be hard when you have a lack of sense of time. This can look like not giving yourself enough time to complete tasks and missing deadlines. And impulsivity. You may wanna start something way too early due to being impulsive. Boredom. It's easy to become bored with no sense of time or waiting for your scheduled activity when you have ADHD and experience time blindness. Losing track of time during transition. This can happen when you have to be somewhere at a certain time and you don't give yourself enough time to get there. Procrastination. Since time blindness can give a false sense of time, you may feel like you have more time to complete a task than you actually have and put it off until the very last minute. There are three separate time-related domains of the brain that are impacted by ADHD, including motor timing, perceptual timing, and temporal foresight. With this in mind, there's a strong association between the difficulty with timing and undesirable behavioral outcomes like impulsivity, inattention. And they're at the very basis of the ADHD diagnosis. Basically, the misjudgment of a sensory issue, it's not a choice. While time blindness on its own continues to be researched, it's widely known that its effect on daily life is far-reaching. Some common effects of time blindness are being chronically late to events or gatherings, being unable to stay organized at home, work, or school, struggling to complete school or work tasks, getting distracted when transitioning from one task to another, being late to pick up kids from school or daycare, missing important deadlines, putting things off like bills or going to the doctor, misjudging how long it will take to complete things like homework or taxes, intention and actions don't always feel like they line up, feeling inadequate or like a disappointment to others, being misjudged for being lazy. If you struggle with these effects from ADHD time blindness, it can be super frustrating. Here are some coping skills I recommend to overcome time blindness. First, identify the areas of impact. Consider which areas of your life are feeling the most impacted by ADHD and time blindness. Is it work, social settings, family? Next, identify and avoid time-sucking activities. If you know that you're agreeing to go to an activity that is going to cost you a lot of time, it's okay to refuse. Put your needs first in order to preserve your own sanity. Save yourself stress later and focus on doing what's going to make your life easier. And next, do not play the blame game. Even though ADHD can feel very debilitating, there are solutions and successful interventions that can help lessen the severity of the symptoms. It's okay to be frustrated, but give yourself credit for getting help. Make sure to set multiple alarms. Alarms and reminders with descriptions are a perfect way to not only remind yourself what you need to do, but also motivate yourself to do it. Make your reminders fun and engaging by owning your own triggers and calling out unhelpful behaviors. This can look like setting a reminder that says, Sarah, you don't have time for this. Put your phone away and get back on track. Always remind yourself why you're making these changes. Set up some feel-good messages that are timed to pop up at your identified lows throughout the day. Encouraging notes for people with ADHD might look like you're doing more than you think you are, or challenge yourself to cross something off that list this afternoon. Breaking up tasks can be really helpful. If you have a lot on your plate and a lot to do, remember it can be helpful to break it up so it's less intimidating. For example, have a plan for morning, afternoon, and evening tasks. Try to use visual timers. For children with ADHD, it helps to have visual clocks as reminders for how much time they have left to, say, play or do an assignment. This way, they're prepared and can determine what they want to do with that remaining time. 
and adults can benefit from these timers too. Start with something easy. Being able to cross one or two small tasks off the list in, your, in the morning is very rewarding and also increases a sense of effectiveness. Pat yourself on the back for making efforts to praise kids who are trying to make improvements. Embrace it as best as you can. It's typical and understandable that people don't like having a mental health disorder or a developmental disorder. With that said, without invalidating your experience, there are ways to own it and be able to lighten the pressure. If you feel comfortable about talking about it, you'll likely find that you're not alone. If you're having trouble with productivity at work or feeling alone and isolated by symptoms that have been consistent throughout your life, it's likely a good time to seek professional help from a therapist or a psychiatrist. Keep in mind that it's important to find a neurodiverse affirming therapist who understands and has experience treating neurodiversity like ADHD. Medication is also another route in addition to therapy, but talk to your provider about medication. Time blindness is difficult with an impact ranging from discrete to significant. With acceptance, cognitive behavioral therapy, and solution-focused treatment, there's absolutely hope that you can make positive change. I've linked some resources below to help you find a therapist or explore medication options if you're interested. Remember, the sooner you get support for ADHD, the better. Don't wait until it's had a major impact on your enjoyment of your life, your work, your relationships, or your family.